I reckon in a few short years' time, there won't be many people who still want to say, oh, I supported lockdowns. Do you think I'm right? I think you're entirely right, John. I've seen this just in the last two and a half years. All of the movement has been, been toward the side of, you know, maybe those, those were excessive. Maybe we did harm our, our kids. Maybe we did harm the poor and the working class. I've seen that, that movement. I see, I see very few people moving in the other direction saying, oh my gosh, I was against lockdown before, but boy, was I wrong. Uh, I wish that we'd really lock down harder. Um, I think that, uh, that movement is entirely in this direction. And, th and there's a good reason for that. It's because it corresponds to reality, right? It's not, it's just, it mean, eventually truth and reality win. And John, I think that's what's happening. Uh, and you're right, within a short period of time, I think people will be ashamed that they ever really were in charge of lockdown, they were in favor of lockdowns. And actually, can I say one thing about G something Gigi said, which I think is really, really important. As that happens, uh, the people that, that were, were speaking out, uh, we, have to be, we have to be accepting. Uh, a lot of the, there's a lot of anger by, um, among the people that were harmed by the lockdowns, that were harmed by the policies that, that we followed the last two years. And there's, uh, the, I've seen some desire to say, well, if you, if you were in favor of them, uh, there must be a, but you, you, you were bad or evil or wrong. I mean, a lot of people were just scared. They just didn't know the facts. Um, and I think we have yeah. to be uh, on this that side, we have to build a broad coalition, an accepting coalition, because uh, to me, the most important thing that can come out of this, or one of the important things that can come out of this is a broad consensus against lockdown. Because as you said, John, this will happen again. Uh, pandemics will happen again. We should never resort to these kinds of measures again. And we have to create a broad political coalition that then uh, establishes lockdown as a dirty word, as, as something to shudder and fear over, rather than something to, to think about as, as a savior from an infectious disease. So I worry a bit about the memory holding that we're being pushed to do in relation to what's happened over the last couple of years. I mean, there's been a lot of scrubbing of tweets and Facebook posts and a lot of, as you say, realignment. Oh, yeah, I always was against lockdown, right? And you actually look back and no, you weren't. You were one of the advocates, right? So some basically looking for chairs in the musical chairs game um, that we are getting to here at the end of, you know, finally people are starting to see uh, that, that this was a, a horrific mistake. But I worry about the memory holding and the amnesia um, that people will have a very strong psychological incentive to undertake um, because they don't want to think of themselves as complicit in, a, in an evil. Right? Because uh, why am I worried about it? Because if we don't have a recognition of what happened, if we don't have a table on which we can all lay our pain from this period and acknowledge it and have some apologies, then I fear we, we won't be able to move forward as effectively, right? And, and so that's my, I, I agree that we need a broad coalition, but I think there is so much anger because of the, just the scale of the destruction that, that we need to have a process of reconciliation some, somehow structured. I mean, in Australia, you'd expect a royal commission. Not that I think that will actually achieve that much, but maybe the, the third round review eventually when we get there will achieve something. And I think the reconciliation process that South Africans followed after apartheid, something like that, but you know, for the whole of the population and with real pain recognized, that's the only way that some people are gonna be able to get over what happened to them during this period. I mean, there's an analogy I, I make with, uh, there's a, in, when a patient dies, in, in medicine, you have a conference. It's called a morbidity and mortality conference. And the doctors and caregivers that are involved will get together. The, the, the spirit isn't of pointing fingers. The spirit of, is, is an honest assessment of what wrong, what led to the patient's death, with, a, with the idea that, that, that uh, from that process of talking about it honestly with one another, we will, we will never do this again. We won't make those same mistakes again. That is the spirit I think we need to start talking about this.